Mr. President, I would like to discuss my bill S-2035, the Federal Employees Fair Treatment Act. And I would ask consent that I could speak as if in morning business. Without objection. The legislation I have filed, S-2035, the Federal Employees Fair Treatment Act, uh, will help uh, alleviate some of the fears from federal workers on a government shutdown. I am pleased to have Senators Reed, Baldwin, Carper, Gillibrand, Rona, Kane, Leahy, Mikulski, Shaheen, and Warner as original co-sponsors. The bill is simple and straightforward. It requires that all federal workers furloughed as a result of any lapse in appropriations that may begin as soon as October 1st will receive their pay retroactively as soon as it is practicable. It's the right thing to do. It's the fair thing to do. Federal workers don't want government shutdowns. They don't cause government shutdowns. They are dedicated public servants who simply want to do their jobs on behalf of the American people. They shouldn't suffer because some Republicans want to shut down the federal government in the misguided notion it will somehow prevent Planned Parenthood from providing health care services to low-income women and their families. Two years ago, these same individuals thought that shutting down the government would prevent the Affordable Care Act from being implemented. They were wrong then, and they are wrong now. As the Congressional Research Service has reported, in historical practice, federal workers who have been furloughed as a result of a shutdown have received their pay retroactively as a result of legislation to that effect. The language in the Federal Employees Fair Treatment Act is similar to the language used to provide pay retroactively to workers furloughed in previous shutdowns. I am pleased that it is supported by the American Federation of Government Employees, the National Treasury Employees Union, the National Active and Retired Federal Employees Association. The Federal Employees Fair Treatment Act includes a new provision that allows exempted employees, those who are required to work during a shutdown, to, to take authorized leave. They too would be paid retroactively as soon as possible after the lapse in appropriations end. During previous shutdowns, exempted employees have been prohibited from taking leave for any reason, including planned surgery or major family events, like a wedding that may have been scheduled weeks or even months in advance causing many of them to lose money on non-refundable plane tickets, hotel deposits, etc. Mr. President, I'm using the process permissible under Rule 14, the standing rules of the Senate, to place S-2035 directly on the legislative calendar. I am doing that to expedite consideration of bill so that the hardworking middle-class federal employees know that they will be treated fairly if there is another shutdown. They shouldn't have to worry about whether they will be paid when a partisan gridlock prevents them from doing their job. Since 2011, federal workers have contributed $159 billion to deficit reduction. They have endured a three-year pay freeze and two substandard pay increases since then for a total of $137 billion. They lost another billion dollars in pay because of sequestration-related furloughs. Federal employees hired since 2013 hired in 2013 and since 2014 are paying an extra $21 billion for their pensions. And each and every federal worker is being asked to do more with less as agencies' budgets are frozen or cut. This is happening to hardworking, patriotic public servants, mostly middle, middle class and struggling to get by like so many Americans. Enough is enough. Since the 1950s and 60s, the U.S. population has increased by 76 percent, and the private sector workforce has surged 133 percent. But the size of the federal workforce has risen just 11 percent. Relevant to the private sector, the federal workforce is less than one-half the size it was back in the 1950s and 60s. The picture that emerges is one of the federal civilian workforces whose size has significantly shrunk compared to the size of the U.S. population it serves, the private sector workforce, and the magnitude of federal spending. I would make the additional point that shutting down the government hurts veterans. Over 30 percent of the civilian federal employees 
are veterans, as opposed to just 7.8 percent of the non-federal workforce. In Texas, for example, veterans comprise 37.5 percent of the civilian federal workforce. Kentucky, it's 33.9 percent. Florida, 38.9 percent. South Carolina, 41.7 percent. Is this how we want to honor the men and women who have stood in harm's way to defend our nation? By telling them to stay home involuntarily and having them to worry about whether they will be paid. Preventing federal workers from doing their jobs just doesn't harm them. It harms all Americans because federal workers patrol our borders and make sure our air and water are clean and our food and drugs are safe. They support our men and women in uniform and care for our wounded warriors. They help our manufacturers compete abroad. They discover cures for life-threatening diseases. They prosecute criminals and terrorists. They maintain and protect critical infrastructure. They explore the universe. They process passport applications. They make sure Social Security, Medicare, and other social safety net programs are functioning properly. When federal workers do their job, they're helping each and every American live a safer and more prosperous life. Mr. President, our tasks here in Congress are simple. We need to keep the government open for business and keep federal workers on their job. Later this year, we will need to raise the debt ceiling so we can continue to pay our bills and maintain the full faith and credit of the United States government. We need to return to regular order around here and negotiate a comprehensive budget deal to replace the sequestration, a budget that maintains critical federal investments while spreading the burden of deficit reduction in a fair way and holding federal workers and their families harmless after subjecting them to so much hardship over the past several months and years. Mr. President, one of the greatest attributes of the American character is pragmatism. Unlike what some other federal workers actually do, here in Congress, balancing the budget is not rocket science. We know the various options. Former President Lyndon Johnson was fond of quoting Prophet Isaiah, come let us reason together. That is what we need to do. We can acknowledge and respect our differences, but at the end of the day, the American people have entrusted us with governing, with being pragmatic. Let's do our job so federal workers can continue to do their jobs on behalf of all Americans. Mr. President, I would suggest the absence of a quorum.